Heavenly Father, <laughs> hey, thank you, God. You're so good. And uh, we're so blessed in this beautiful place of paradise, Lord God. I'm so, so thankful for your many blessings. Right now, as we enter the reading of your word, we pray that you anoint this time together. That you give us ears that we may hear what the Spirit says there. Father, and more than that, just not be hearers, but doers of the word. Um, help us to take it heart and follow uh, these words and apply it in our life, extending the kingdom of God. A blessing I want to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the title of my sharing and my talk message today would be No Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, no worry, be happy. No worry. <laughs> so now, now, and the, now and again, um, uh, it's a natural response or uh, a natural feeling that at times we worry. Um, the word we are talking about this morning through the scripture is more about being consumed by wearing. Amen? Um, again, it's a natural uh, uh, instinct or feeling that we worry for little things. Um, again, in, in the passage or in the idea and the sharing is that we do not let it consume us in, in worrying. And so, I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 12. If you've got your Bibles, you can turn with me there or listen, or, um, tablets, and so forth. Uh, reading from the ESV version, as I said, kind of a two part sharing. You know, one says, No worry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm in Luke. Chapter 12, uh, verse 22. And the word says, And he said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious, or do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour in the span of life. If then you are not able to do all, are you not able to do as small a thing as that? Why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he be clothed you? O you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat, and what you are to drink, nor, nor be worried. For all the nations of this world seek after the things and your father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom. And these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money, bags that do not grow old with treasures in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys, for where your treasures is, there will be your heart. 
you also. Amen? Let's pause there for a second as we, as we, as we digest, as we uh, look, uh, you know, look back into our reading. Um, when, the, when the men's been gathering, one of the word, one of the word that came out of our men's meeting, when we looking in, in the word of God or we're looking at the concept of keys of God, the, the, the word that is kind of uh, taking a taking a hold of the men's heart. They're using this word marinate. Marinate. And as you think on the word, let it marinate into you. Soak in the what is the word saying. So it's kind of a um, it's kind of a joy that you see some of the men's in public, you know, and uh, you use that word, marinate. But anyways, that's kind of what we're doing. We're looking at this word today and letting it marinate, soak in what it's saying to us. And interesting, as I said, it is a common feeling of uh, a sense of worrying or a feeling you can be angry, sad, and mad. But you don't want to be consumed or don't let it consume you. And here, in Scripture, it, it, it tells us that, you know, these little things, or there's things that we worry about. And they use the example of clothing and food. But there's other things, I, I believe, that, you know, finances and other stuff that we can get consumed by. But then the, the Scripture tells us you shouldn't worry about that thing. That I mean, has a place, but it's not important. But then it says, "Look at that bird, or look look around you. Look at the uh, how it 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 doesn't have a home. It it doesn't have a, a places to sleep, or uh, it it doesn't work, nor it reaps, and it doesn't have barn. You know, some place to crash in, or." Uh, but, but but when you look at that bird and its beauty, God provides for that bird. And, and, and how much more are we? And, and then when he, he talked about how we look at a beautiful flower or a lily, we look at the things of uh, how, how beautiful things are in, in nature. And yet, God cycles it and... and brings the rain and he brings the, the oxygen and the blossom. And so I think it's so awesome. It kind of reminds us that how much more are we if, if the Lord is nurturing the island or, or nurturing the ocean. And these are things that um, are a blessing to us. Amen? Amen. That that in relations that we take care of each other, again. Um, it's kind of a common saying that, you know, malama aina, malama kekai, that you take care. And as you take care, it takes care of you. Amen. Um, I like to think that as we look around, it, that it reminds us about the love of God. It re reminds us how much God loves us. Um, so many times that we, I don't know if we spoiled at times, or, or sometimes we just um, selfish. I don't know what the, it, it could be. But if you look at the air we breathe and the water we drink and, and, and where we live, oh, blessed, amen. blessed, yep. amen? Uh, then you see the news. Freezing over there, hot over there, you know the kind. We get one climate weather within 65 and 85, generally 90% of the time. And you know, and we bless, you know. The, the best fish you can eat in the world, you can find it right out here. I mean, just um, the air that we breathe. Just declaring the love of God. Amen? Amen. The love of God to the people of Hawaii. The love of God to the people of Molokai. The love of God 
for you. Amen. That you are here being nurtured in this place. Amen? Yeah, really and, and so, that's why sometimes I think we, we, we a little bit spoil. I mean, if you're eating steak every time, amen? Or you're eating lobster and steak every time, amen? After you get up to a certain age, oh, you gotta watch out, man. You gotta watch the diet. <laughs> you gotta go eat vegetable, amen? You gotta eat right. But I, I, I just wanna encourage you, as, as we look at how sometimes there are, there are little things that wanna consume us, the encouragement is trust in the Lord. And, and the, the encouragement is God loves us. We shouldn't be consumed by it. Let's be consumed by His love. Amen? Let's be consumed by His love and His mercy. Yeah? We, 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 we cannot change certain things. Amen? And I like to think that in the Lord, I'm just along for the ride. Amen? In the Lord. I'm just the Lord for the ride. Yeah? In the Lord. And so, um, again, thinking about these things, I, I'd like to encourage you, because it seems like every now and then, um, the spirit of worrisome wants to come upon us about stuff, that whether it's financial, relationship, medical, <laughs> amen? For some of us that are older, medical, and for some of us, medical. <laughs> Amen? But continue to uh, have faith, love in the Lord, and trust the Lord in, in the process that these things are working on your behalf. That these things have to occur. Amen? These things will occur in our life. And we're just going to continue to... Um, here, here's what it said that kind of really sums it up uh, in, in, in verse 31. Instead, seek his kingdom and these things will be added unto you. Amen. Seek his kingdom. Amen. And just spend a second about kingdom. I, I know I talked about the kingdom of God several times, but for those who haven't heard me talk about the kingdom, you know, um, I just wanted to share some thoughts about seeking God's kingdom. It's interesting enough when you ask certain people, okay, you hear this term, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And, and some of the, um, uh, some of the smartest people, um, they try to define what, what is the kingdom of God. And I think we kind of try to simplify it in one of our, our sharing. The kingdom of God is where God is king. <laughs> it's a place where Jesus is king. That, that, that's a good place, you know. Whose kingdom is that? It's not a kingdom of this world, amen. So it doesn't compete in different countries. You won't see him running for governor or president or CEO. Right? It's a different kingdom, <laughs> amen. He's not going after that kingdom or this kingdom. It's not a material kingdom. It's the spiritual kingdom, amen. amen. The kingdom of God. Amen. Where God is king. Where Christ is king. Okay, that's one way to uh, kind of define it. But when you look at the passage of scriptures, and it talks about the kingdom of God has come. Amen. amen. Um, and and you, go, you go check it out. And I don't have enough time to really go into that because we're, we're talking about the Lord be happy. Maybe some other time we'll preach on the kingdom of God. But, but just let me say this. When you're thinking about the kingdom of God, the, the two meanings that really make sense is a, a place where God is king. The other place, or the other thought of the principle about the kingdom of God is the perfect will of God. If you put the definition in them and, and you look at certain places where it talks about Oh, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God has come. Amen. There's different places in, in Scripture. If you put the perfect will of God, it, it just aligns up. When they say seek the kingdom of God, you're really seeking the will of God, the perfect will of God. And interesting enough, it, it seems at times that that will is the same 
but always moving. What am I talking about? Well, the will of God is, is, is kind of like a living organism. Because what you're in this situation here, the kingdom of God, and then you're in this situation here, the kingdom of God, it, it, it just continues a different will at the different situation that you have. Amen? And, and this is why it's so important, and, and we cannot stress this enough, that, that we study the will of God. How you know you're pursuing the will of God? Well, you got to study the will of God. you got to know who God is, right? Because you get God's will, you get your will, and then you get the devil's will. Amen? And sometimes you mush up some of the will. You think it's your will, or you think it's God's will, you think it's God's kingdom you're pursuing, when, when you actually are, are pursuing the will of the devil. Amen? Amen. Uh, again, two, two ways you can line it up. And you constantly hear me say this, and, and, and I think it's very important because people keep saying that they're pursuing or they're living a Christian life, but their, their evidence or the pursuing of it it, it is not consistent with the will of God. It's so important that when we're pursuing the will of God, it has to line up with the word of God. Amen? Amen? Yes. Um, just fundamental basics. Um, Christianity 101. Uh, it, you cannot say, I'm doing the will of God, and it's not in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, you cannot say, uh, uh, I'm, I'm moving with the Spirit, but if the spirit is not aligned with the word and the word is not aligned with the spirit, throw the red flag, blow the whistle, there's a foul going on, shooting too. No. When the spirit lines up with the word, field goal, you're there. Amen? And the extra point. And the extra point. So it has to align. And, and when that aligns, you know the will of God. And when you exercise the will of God, Amen. And every now and then, every now and then, it's as if the perfect will of God comes upon you. Amen. Every so now and then, the perfect will comes upon this situation. And I truly believe when that happens, when that happens, when the kingdom of God has come, we experience a little bit what heaven is like. Amen. We experience the ultimate love of God through the will of God and when it comes to us or when we in the perfect will of God we have a little bit taste of what heaven is like. Amen? And I don't know about you, as we get the glimpse or we get the taste of heaven, I'm an addict, man. <laughs> I'm an addict, man. I'm crazy. I want another sniff of that. <laughs> Amen? I'm not talking about physical stuff, right? I'm talking about Spiritual stuff. I want to. I want. They, when they talk about being spiritual high, Amen. I know what they're talking about because it's the perfect will of God, that love, that peace, that anointing that you can only say wasn't me, was only God. Amen. I mean, from different cir circumstances that you've been in, and, and, and the mercies of God will just come upon you, and the love of God will come upon you. You cannot say it, but oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When you think you 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 was in some suffering, or when you think you're in this situation, and you, you continue to cry out to Him, and His will and His mercy come unto you, all you can do is just bask in His love, Amen. bask in His presence, and say thank you, thank you, Lord. Amen. This is too much for me to handle. This is too much for me. Take it from me, Lord. Amen. Have me hide in your love. This will of God. Um, that make us no worry. Amen. And we trust it. So this one, as I said, in verse 37, or excuse me, 31, it says, instead, instead of worrying, instead of letting these things get to you, it says, 31, it says, instead of that, seek the kingdom and these things will be added unto you. Amen. Same thing that Matthew 6.33 said, yeah? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So that, that's why when I have a situation, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to try to figure it out by myself? No, I'm going to say, God, what would you do in this situation? Let me see what the Word of God says about this. And as you look in the Word of God and as you pray, the will of God reveals itself amen. to you. Amen. Sometimes you gotta wait upon the Lord, amen. Not every time you're gonna just say, Oh, right on, I get on God. No. But but get this, as you continue to study God's word and be close to the to, to the Lord, it's as if you become culturally sensitive to the will of God. Hmm? As you continue to go to church, read your Bible, continue to exercise the will of God, um, the language of God will come out. The mindset of the Lord will continue to, to, to come out. Amen? So when things happen in our life, amen, it becomes a little easier to pursue the will of God. As we pursue the will of God, we are pursuing the kingdom of God. Amen? amen? And as we continue to clothe ourselves in the kingdom, we're clothing ourselves in the will of God. The more we study, the more we uh, understand the principles of God, amen, it comes with a price though. It comes with a price, it comes with a cost, amen. We're going to read that in, in our second part of our reading, be happy. So I, I, I'm not, I can keep on going down that road, but let, let, let me continue to read. Because we'll never get to the end of the reading if I keep on going down that road. But anyways, okay, 31 said, instead of all these other stuff, right? Instead of these stuff, seek the kingdom of God. Seek the will, seek the word of the Lord. Amen? And as you seek the word of the Lord, guess what? He's going to take care of the other stuff. Amen? He's going to bring in alignment the other stuff. I constantly say, when I'm good this way, then I'm good that way. Amen? Yeah. When things are good this way, yeah. but somehow, when something is rocky this way, oh, sometimes this guy is getting rocky yeah. this way. Amen? Yeah. Amen? You let stuff get to you. Amen? You let the, the, the flesh get to you. Amen? But when you, you go this way in the Lord, yeah, then this stuff, Come good to Amen. 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 And this is why it's so important. And, and the scripture lines it up says, but seek ye first. Yeah? But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah? And then these stuff should be okay and be added unto you. They're going to take care of God going to give you the wisdom and the understanding and the peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, get, get some people. Whatever you do, you're not going to make them happy. Amen. But you have peace because you align this way. You did all you could and can to some people. And now if they upset about you or they hold unforgiveness, amen, you forgive them. You good. Yes. Amen. You good with the Lord. Lord. But, but, but when, when you allow not the will of God, you know, like forgive them, yeah. you hold bitterness, you know, get all kinds of stuff, right? They're not, then now you're not good with it. So it's important, again, to seek the will of God, the kingdom of God. And when you're in that mode, man, and, and you know what's so cool? I, I know many of us, if not all of us, have been in that mode already. You know what I'm talking about. You've been that way with the Lord. You've been anointed. There's some places in our life that it's as if the enemy would come in like a flood, but God would raise up a standard part of his blood. There's an anointing that came upon you. Amen. That, 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 that I want to encourage all of us to get back to that place. Amen. Get back to the place where we we solid with the Lord. We solid in the kingdom of God. You know. Many of us know this passion, this place. You know, for some of us, we remember when we first loved the Lord. When we first the light bulb came on. Man, it was like fire. Amen. Fire in the Lord. Passionate, not only for the Lord, but passion for people. Amen. Amen. Because that's the business of the Lord. You know, that's the business of the Lord. He, you know, desire that none shall perish, but all come to the same knowledge of Christ. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When we're really passionate of people, 
and, and doing the will of God. Amen. Powerful. Powerful. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just sort of on the way. I, I, I gotta finish this second. <laughs> okay, so, anyways, no word. Yeah, no word it says. But, uh, but seek his kingdom. It says, you know, provide yourself not with money bags, they grow old, um, and, and with treasures, but, but you're really pursuing the treasures in heaven. And verse 34 says, for where your treasures is, there will you, your heart be also. Amen. So important that our heart is lined up with the will of God. Amen. Amen. And there's the true treasures that our heart is lined up. And as we line up the will of God, check this out. As we read the second part, and, 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 and it says in verse 35, as we read down, it tells us to stay dressed for action. And keep your lamps burning. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm from the ESV version. Stay dressed for action. If um, if you know me, or if I call you on the phone, one of my favorite um, greetings is, "Hey, what's the action?" <laughs> if I call you, "Hey, what's the action?" You know, because we're moving from action to action. Amen. <laughs> action to action. You know, so. When I call you on the phone and you hear me say that, that, that's kind of my greeting. Hey, what's the action? Okay, say so stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from a wedding feast. So that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knock. Blessed are those servants whom the master find awake when he comes. Truly I say unto you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and you will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or the third and finds them awake, blessed are those serving. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have left, he would he would not have left his house to be broken into. You must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour do, that you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, who then is faithful and wise manager whom the master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is the servant whom the master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if the servant say to him, my master is delayed in coming and being uh, and beings to beat the male and female servant, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of the servant will come on the day when he does not expect him at the hour he does not know and will cut him into pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master will but did not get ready or according to his will will receive a severe beating but the one who did not know and did what deserving a beating will receive light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom the entrusted much, there will be demanded and more. Amen? So let's marinate a little bit. <laughs> marinate on this word now. We've entered a different type of reading, right? The first one that really tells us no worry, right? Talking about um, the birds of the air. We talk about the flower and the environment and how much more God loves us that He will provide our needs. So it's not about flesh stuff. Yeah, it's about spiritual stuff that we should continue. Well, our, our mentality 
should be to seek the kingdom of God, to seek the will of God, to store up our treasures in heaven. That's our first reading. But here, here we see a different reading. It kind of they're related to each other. But this reading tells us, oh man, be ready for action. Yeah? Be ready for action. And it he it talks about like a parable. It talks about how you gotta be you know, like a man who is waiting for his master. Basically, it's like us waiting for Jesus to come, right? He wants us to be ready and doing and in action. And, and, and in his version, he uses the word awake. He wants us to be awake. Amen. When, you, when he comes and he finds you awake, oh man, bless you. Bless are you, yeah? That now he, when, he, when he come, he will bring you in and, and put you on the recliner and he will serve you. Amen? Because you would serve him. Well, Amen? God. Pretty cool concept, right? As we serving him, when we get to heaven, he's serving us. Well, th this is how this parable kind of makes or, or describes it. It says, yeah, when the master knock, you know, um, and he find you awake, oh, blessed are you. Hey, come the second time in the second watch. Hey, you awake still yet? Right on, man. Blessed are you. The third time he come, you still awake. But, he says, if you don't find you, yeah, he says, but, um, but the third watch, he finds you awake. Blessed are the servants. And then he says this, but, if, if, if you knew, if you knew that the master was coming and he makes like a thief in the night, right? The language kind of changes, it says in verse 39. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not left his house to be broken into. You must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. So, again, he's saying that you got to be awake, you got to be awake, you got to be awake. And then he tells you, hey, if you knew... When the thief was going to break into your house, you'd be ready. Amen? You'd be waiting. You wouldn't let him break into your house, right? Like Robin, you'd have the dog outside barking. <laughs> Catch you on your leg. <laughs> right? But you'd be ready. For some of us, if you know my dog, but I get tiny dog. But if you know my dog, you might be hiding in the back of the door, waiting on back. Waiting for the guy breaking your house. Hey, come on. Right on his head. <laughs> But the coming of the Lord is not like that. You're not going to know. Yeah, you're not going to know. But what he's saying that, you know, you got to be ready. Um, and, and basically he's saying we got to be ready. And by, by being ready is by doing action. By doing action is doing the will of God. Amen? That's how you are ready. That you continue to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. You continue to carry out the will of God. Not, not what I say, but the word says. You follow you following the word. You're following the word. I'm just a cheerleader of the word. Amen? Amen. I'm just encouraging in the word as the word reminds us that we follow the will of God. That we follow the word. And it's so important that we know the will of God that we may follow the will of God. Amen? As I mentioned before. So you must be ready. And and then Peter, Peter said, Lord, Lord. What, what are you saying? Is this for everybody? Who is this for? And, and, and so, interesting enough, the Lord continued to tell them that, you know, um, He uses the concept of um, master and manager, you know, caretaker, you know. And He says that, you know, uh, who is then faithful and, and a wise person or manager that, that the master is going to set over of his household. Blessed is the servant who the master find doing. Amen. Doing what? Doing the will of God. Carrying out the will of God. Amen. That the master might do when he comes. Truly I say, he will set him over all possession. Amen. But, but, if, if you're slacking, and you figure, 
oh, man, it's taking so long for calm. I don't know about you, but every time you drive to certain places, you see the big sign, Jesus is coming soon. A lot of people is mocking. Jesus is coming soon. He said that for 2,000 years now, Jesus is coming soon. When he coming? And they start mocking when Jesus is coming soon, right? And as we look at this passage, people figure, oh, okay, we get some time that he's not coming, so we're going to play, we're going to do other things. And this is what it says, that some people, they're not paying attention. They're not paying attention, so they stop doing the will of God. Amen? They're distracted and doing other things, right? Three different wills, to make it easy, I'm kind of categorizing it in three different wills. There's God's will, <coughs> there's our will, and then there's the devil's will. Amen? Amen. So, um, in actuality, I'm just saying three different wills, but there's actually, to me, there's only two choices. God's will and the devil's will. Your will, you're going to decide which one you're going to choose. Amen? That's that third will. But you, you're going to choose soda A or soda B. I like the crack. No. That's something else. Just, I'm just saying that there's three basic will, category will, God's will, your will, and the devil's will. We're promoting that you choose God's will. Amen? Amen. That, that you are doing, that you are awake. In the descriptive reading, we say that you are doing when you are awake, that you choose God's will. You find out the more you choose the will of the Lord, the more you choose the will of the Lord, the more you're in the kingdom of the Lord. You, Lord. Amen? You're in the presence of the will of God. But, but, but get this. It, let, let me just finish this and, and we'll talk some more. But then it says, by doing. So you cannot know the will of God and just not do nothing about it. Yeah. It requires action. <laughs> it requires action on your part, doing the will of God. And that's the descriptive word it uses here is a week. And then it warns us, if you're not doing that will, if you're not awake, then the other thing that you're doing is not the will of God. And in that, it says, on that day when he comes back, he will cut them into pieces in 46. And 47 says, the servant who knew the master, who knew the master's will, but did not get ready, or according to his will, will receive a severe beating. Yeah? But the one who did not know the master's will, or did, did what deserving a beating, will receive a light beating. Everyone who was given much will be required from him whom he trusted much, they will be demanded more. So, interesting that a lot of people um, I'd like to think when, when they know the truth of the Lord, when, when they receive the gift of Christ, when they receive the, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, they're truly drawn to do God's will. Amen? I, 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 like, I like to believe it wholeheartedly. But at sometimes, in people's walk, um, for whatever reason, the Lord is taking some time coming back. For whatever reason, they decide that they're going to do some, something else than the will of God. And then for, some, for, for whatever reason, instead of continuing to, to do the will of God, in the beginning part, they were doing the will of God. In the beginning part, they were pursuing the will of God and something would happen. They got tired of doing the will of God. They, they whatever. And, and, and they started slacking or they started not, you know, in this version, it, it says, ah, they started drinking. In this version, they started beating the maid servant and the, the, the male servant. And basically, it just described that they didn't pursue the will of God. And here's a, here's a kind of crazy one. 
you know? Because our life is designed to pursue the will of God until He takes us home. Our life is designed to live in the will of God. But it's our pursuit of living in that will. When we don't pursue the will of God, we allow other stuff to come in. We don't, when we don't pursue the will of God, we drift, we find ourselves pursuing other things, flesh, and then, and, and then we're adrift. Our life is a life that pursues the kingdom, is designed to pursue the perfect will of God. And if we're not, we're adrift. Interesting enough, if we pursue and we live in that will and that present, the parable says we're blessed. Mm -hmm. If we're awake, we're blessed. Mm -hmm. If the master come and he find you awake, yeah, he find you doing, you're blessed, the, the passage says. Amen. And um, to me, if you're blessed, you're happy. Amen. I don't know what person, they're not blessed and, and, and they, they say, I'm not happy, but I'm blessed. I'm so blessed, can you tell? Right? When you bless, right? When you bless, you is happy. Right? You're not blessed, you're not happy. Sim I'm trying to keep it simple, right? When you bless, you know, you are happy. And so I said, you know, that's why I said, no worry, right? Be happy. No worry tells us that we're going to trust in the Lord, that we're going to seek the kingdom of God, we're going to seek Him first, and we're going to be happy because we know as we seek Him and we're living in His will, we bless. Amen. We're happy because we are in His will. Amen? We bless. Being in His will is being blessed. And being blessed is being in the will of God. Being in the will of God is being ready for action. Amen. Being in the will of God is that being in action that we read, that we doing. That's what it means to live or to be in the will of God. Amen. We are in the what, what God wants us to do. We are pursuing the will. And, and, and you know, it's an ever pursuing of this will because it's it's not by one situation. It's by moment by moment. You pursue His will by moment by moment. Amen. You meet this person, you have a discussion, you, you subconsciously, you, you're exercising the will of God. What can I say to this person that I may be a blessing to this person? Or maybe I don't need to say anything. Maybe God is telling me just be a listener. Amen. Maybe I'm just to, to listen. I'm still pursuing the will of God. Moment by moment, I'm pursuing His will. I go on the street. Wherever I go, I'm constantly in pursuit of the will of God. In conversation, in the work that I do, at home, in the grocery store, down the street, I always got to be mindful for pursuing the will of God. Moment by moment, my life is in a pursuit of God's love and will. And as I pursue His will, yeah, He pours His love. He pours His love. Amen. Amen. Because He's happy because I'm pursuing His will. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong, not easy. Amen. But through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We can do it. Amen. He knew that we're, we can't do it on our own strength. Yeah. And so he gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Word of God that we can be shored up yeah, in Him. The Bible says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Sometimes it feels like we've beaten up, that we pursue the will and we have cracks. Amen? Hey, praise the Lord. Amen? God is working our spiritual man out. <laughs> Amen? If, if, if we never was in trouble, if we never needed one Savior, then we would never need Jesus. Amen? But the truth is, 
We need one Savior every day. And for like us, or for me, I need, I need Him every moment of the day. Because if, if I don't receive Him, yeah, I, I, I turn adrift. I turn adrift. I look at other things. My mind stays down the rabbit hole. Yeah? But I want to be continuing to pursuing God's will. No worry. Just be happy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's We're going to call up the worship team uh, to uh, render our closing song. So, Lord, um, help us to continue to trust in you. Help us to store up our treasures in heaven. Help us to continue to study, to know you, will of God, and not um, to know what is not of your will. We pray for your help, God, that we may pursue your will in every conversation. In every situation, God, that you be glorified. We pray, we pray forgiveness, Lord God. At times we fall, at times we forget. Sometimes we influence from not so good stuff. And so we pray help, God. Bring into remembrance through your Holy Spirit about your love, about your grace, that we may be more like you, God pursuing your love, Lord God. And, and so, Lord, we thank you, God, for today's message. No worry, be happy, God. And we pray as we depart from one another whenever from your presence, that blessing be upon your people. Dreams and visions, Father, opportunity to be an extension of your love, Lord God, in community, in Ohana. May we continue to grow in the grace of and the knowledge of Jesus Christ by exercising your love, your will, God, living in your perfect kingdom here on earth. So, Father, we thank you again. Take us home safely. All this we pray in Jesus' name and all God's people say. Amen. Amen. Amen.